Hi, I'm Margaret and welcome to Garden School. You know, it's the very end of summer, the beginning of fall. I've been noticing when I'm watering my dahlias especially, there's a bunch of little bugs that fly up, little flies that fly around. They're really tiny. I'm wondering what those are, what's causing them, and what to do about it. Let's find out, okay? So these things are so tiny to see. I never see them when they're, um, you know, sitting on a leaf or anything. But boy, as soon as I start to disturb the plants or to, to bring in the hose to water, these things fly all over the place. And they're a little bit bluish in color, light blue. Very light colored and light blue. Let's go see what we can do to find out what these things are. Well, I've also discovered that I have some white fly damage and some white flies in my little greenhouse where the tomatoes are. I want to take a look at the underside of these leaves. They really do look pretty ragged um, now at the end of the season. It is the middle of September and I wouldn't expect these to be going on too much longer. So let's look at the underside where we can see some of the evidence of the flies themselves. So here on the underside of this very raggedy leaf, there's some little white fly. Now, um, they do move around. They do fly around. Um, and I would kind of expect to see more in here based on the amount of damage that uh, you can see how the, how the cells have been sucked from there. Their phloem has been sucked out by the piercing uh, mouth parts of these little insects. They are not really true flies. They're related to aphids more. And you can also see, compared to my thumb here, how tiny this thing is. There are a lot of different kinds of white flies. Um, many of them are specific, have a name specific to uh, an agricultural crop. The tomato white fly, the citrus white fly, even the greenhouse white fly. Uh, and some of them are not white, some of them are even black. But um, generally about less than three millimeters in length. And three millimeters, if you imagine two pennies stacked up, the width of that um, is three millimeters or smaller than that. Now, what can I do here um, in my greenhouse? I prefer not to hose off the foliage. Um, that's one thing you can do, but I don't really want to get the foliage of my tomato plants wet. Um, I could spray with a neem oil or an insecticidal soap on the underside, especially where those eggs and those developing nymphs and instars would be, but that is going to be quite time consuming. And considering the amount of the small amount of the crop that I still have left here, I'm not going to pursue that avenue. If it was the beginning of the season, I might be a little more aggressive. Um, another thing that you can do is to set um, up some sticky yellow sticky traps. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm just going to see if I actually can collect some of them as they're flying around. They are, they do seem to be attracted to the color yellow. And so that's what I'm going to try. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, since the white flies are attracted to the color yellow, I've just cut some pieces of yellow construction paper, and I've used some double-sided sticky tape to make some strips of tape that's sticky, and I'm gonna just position these um, by the tomato plants in the greenhouse, and then we'll check in a couple days to see what kind of uh, collection we've uh, achieved. So there we go, we got our yellow paper with sticky tape on it positioned there, and we will check 
a little check on this tomorrow to see what we've collected we have now there is a product called that I'm aware of called Tanglefoot it's a very sticky thing for uh, collecting insects as they travel across if you had that you could uh, paint that onto a piece of yellow cardboard or or a board or something like that or hang a I think you can also purchase yellow sticky traps but this is a little impromptu uh, situation and we'll see if this works. Now I do understand that this is not really going to address the white fly situation in my greenhouse. I will probably trap some and we're at the end of the season so I'm fine with that. If it was earlier in the season and the infestation was much higher I would want to think of something different. Um, be more aggressive with the sticky traps perhaps. Uh, uh, remove damaged foliage, yes. Um, maybe spray with an insecticidal soap or a neem oil, perhaps, yes. There are also uh, parasitic wasps and ladybug, certain kind of ladybug that are also predatory on the whitefly um, immature stages. Now, if you're outside, not in a greenhouse, you probably could spray off the foliage of what you have. I think I might try and do that with the dahlias in the pea patch. So there's some ideas about how to control the white fly. Now the problem with white fly is twofold. They, their mouth parts which are, um, they pierce this plant tissue and will suck out the phloem, the food part for the plant and they can certainly do damage on leaves but if it's very high infestation, they can also even kill a plant. We certainly don't want to have that happen. Plus, it makes it look at, you know, really sick and weak. But the other thing is, their mouth parts, that piercing apparatus, can introduce bacteria, and it can also um, be a, a vector for transmitting viruses. Now that's something you would really want to think about. Uh, we certainly don't want viruses to be invading our plants. That can be a bigger problem than bacteria. And then also they do um, exude a kind of a honeydew, which is a, a substance, a byproduct or a waste product from the insect. And that honeydew, which is kind of sticky, um, can give uh, a good situation, a good environment for a fungus to grow kind of a black sooty fungus. You don't want that either. I believe that what I was seeing on the leaves were instars, so the different stages of the immature phase of the white fly. That's probably what I was seeing stationary there on those leaves. Well, I've set up my traps, caught just a little bit of something, not sure what. I'm gonna keep pursuing that and think about what I might do again next year um, in advance of this. Maybe I'll buy some of that sticky substance and prepare some yellow painted boards or something like that and get that ready. Another thing, I may decide to space my dahlia plants a little bit further so there's some more natural ventilation between each plant. That might help as well. Well, there's always more to learn in the garden. Bye-bye.